it's, it's been a very interesting, you know, set of uh, days, I guess a, a few days, uh, considering that uh, we're supposed to be kind of heading in towards our Big Ten play and, you know, all the things that uh, you think are very important, you know, until something like, you know, this happens and um, we are doing everything that we can to help our players work through these difficult times and not having softball and also having the threat of the COVID-19 virus. And I think our leadership has done a great job and we're just uh, taking it day by day. All right, we'll open it up for questions. Again, please say your name and outlet before asking questions. Hey, Tyra, this is Jeremy Warner from 24-7 Sports. I'm just wondering the, the process of you hearing this news and, and how you relate it to your players and, and just how they've reacted. Well, as you can imagine, it's very strange. Uh, it actually kind of, the process started for us on Wednesday when we were heading out to play Missouri at uh, a neutral site. And uh, we got, kind of got word that morning that we could play the game, but we couldn't have fans and we going back and forth. So um, that was kind of our first uh, big stretch, you know, where we had to make decisions and, uh, you know, kind of come, come into the idea of the new normal of doing things differently. And uh, we were able to play the game. We were able to have fans. So that was our last game, and we didn't even, you know, know it. So it's pretty surreal uh, kind of thinking back on that. And uh, once we got back to town the next day, uh, we had to make the announcement. So, um, and a lot of, you know, with social media these days, many people, we know our team already kind of knew what was going on. Um, you know, things were kind of starting to pop out that the campus was closing. We chose to have a team meeting. Uh, we were able to kind of, you know, get a chance to see everyone. Uh, most of my assistants have dogs, so we actually brought – their dogs to kind of, uh, you know, kind of have some sort of support there. But uh, it, it was, you know, very, very difficult to tell them that their seasons are over. What was that last game like? Uh, not, not that you knew it was your last game, but I think you might have been the last sporting event for Illinois of the year. Not, not that you look back on that. What's that like? Oh, wow. I never thought of it that way. Um, we, well, we ended with a win, which was cool. Uh, we were able to defeat a very strong Missouri team. And we've been playing that game since I've been here. And I think even before I was here, uh, Coach Terry Gold and her staff scheduled that border battle game. Uh, so it was great to see. We, I mean, we had so many fans, more than I've ever seen at that particular game at that venue. Uh, there were fans all in the outfield. And, you know, we were able to play sharp. And Sydney Sickles ended the game on the strikeout. Um, Addie Jarvis started us, you know, and, and did a tremendous job. So, um, you know, if that has to be your last game, then that's – or if that's the last game for Illinois Athletics, you know, 2019 uh, – 1920, then um, it's not a bad way to go out. Thanks, Hey, Coach. This is, this is Gavin Good with 247. And, you know, I'm just looking at your roster. Like, you've got a lot of players um, – from out of state compared to the baseball team. And I know most of the baseball teams, guys are, are at home, you know, in their various in-state locations. Where are most of the, the team at for you right now? And, and what sort of, you know, the plan just over the next few days and uh, weeks? Uh, we also have a lot of kids that are Midwesterners. Uh, we have quite a few from the state of Illinois, quite a few from uh, Iowa. You know, we have one from Iowa Ohio. So those guys are all home. They drove home. Uh, we do have some uh, kids from California. That was kind of more of a discussion. Most of them have chosen to go home uh, as well. So we're all scattered out. Uh, we had a staff meeting yesterday to talk about staff meeting to kind of discuss our, our plans moving forward. We're not allowed to have any accountable activity as of right now. Uh, but we are making plans so that if the NCAA allows us to have countable activity to kind of do things in a, a Zoom, Skype fashion. Um, other than that, we've just been keeping up with our players through text and calls. Tara, Nico Heffling here with Fox, Illinois. 
Dan Hartlib said yesterday that he's kind of hoping that his guys treat this as a redshirt year with the extra ill or extra year of eligibility that is set to be granted from the NCAA. With such a young team for you, is that something that you're trying to look at? You know, maybe as a positive that you've only got two seniors and, and pretty much this entire roster will get that extra year to, to kind of improve. I think it's a definite positive uh, from the standpoint of that uh, on the field, if you had a chance to possibly attend one of our games, and uh, obviously it would have been on the road because we didn't get to play home. Uh, but we had so many freshmen and sophomores in key positions. Uh, our most decorated returner is uh, Bella Loya, and she's a junior. So, um, yeah, I think it's a very positive situation when we were able to play 22 games. Uh, you know, our freshmen were able to kind of get a feel. In addition to the uh, foreign tour that we were on this summer, you know, we, we got a lot of kind of free games and free moments with our players, with our very young team. Coach, you got any anyone yet? kind of in, in relation to that extra year of eligibility, maybe the, the two seniors in particular? Only uh, in theory. Um, the last time I spoke to them, it was, you know, not a official. Still kind of, you know, I don't think 100% official as far as the parameters and things of that nature. So it's mostly conceptual right now. Just, hey, if, if this were to happen, you know, what are your thoughts? And, with the with those guys, with those two, um, everything is again. I don't think it's hit them yet, so they're still trying to sort through that and figure those things out. So you guys were set to host the Big Ten tournament this season. Just you know, having that be canceled, how big of a loss is that for the program? I know it was something you guys were really excited about. Uh, it's, a, it's a big loss. Um, Katie Taylor, our event manager event management uh, person, she has done like an excellent job just keeping us in the loop and uh, getting everything prepared for us. Um, so I'm sure it was kind of uh, interesting for her to know that this is over, but um, it, it's a blow. We were super excited about it, and hopefully we can figure something out to where, you know, we don't get skipped, but just, you know, delayed. Hi, Coach. Um, I'm Clara Bryan from the Daily Illini. Um, I was just wondering, how is the team staying prepared in case the season resumes? Because I know the Big Ten is planning to take a second look at all of this on April 6th. Uh, we've had detailed talks, especially with our leaders, our captains, about you know this is an opportunity to uh, make a move. Uh, we're a program kind of on the edge of uh, you know having a a name and a national prominence. So, you know, this is a chance to, you know, work really hard in the classroom, work really hard, you know, physically to get, you know, as physically strong as possible, mentally strong. Um, you know, so we've kind of had that discussion, you know, how many situations, if ever, you know, have you had where everyone's kind of in the same boat? And there's going to be teams that respond in all, you know, kinds of ways. And our response, you know, we're choosing to use this as a time to, to gain a lead and to move ahead. Um, since your team is kind of scattered around, how important is it in, in the next few weeks, months, just to maybe stay connected and you know, maybe keep them connected and engaged and maybe each other and, and in the program? Uh, I think it's very important. You know, we are actually that wise, you know, uh, coming up with PowerPoints and, uh, you know, different written information to pass out to kind of stay connected. Uh, we're going to, again, once we can have, once the NCAA allows us, we're going to have, you know, meetings uh, just via Skype or Zoom to, you um, you know, team meetings to kind of talk strategy and philosophy and, you know, whatever we're allowed. So we're making specific plans to continue to, to meet in, to check in. Um, you know, it's not like the summer where our summers, you know, we kind of have to let everybody kind of go on their own and just trust that they're working.
working. Um, but if we're able to, you know, start things again in April, start CARA, we're going to be really intentional and specific about it and kind of continue to hold meetings and especially work on our softball IQ. You know, we, because we have a young team, you know, there are some things that we, we're learning on the job, per se, and we're hoping to, you know, use video and different types of multimedia to, uh, to kind of get, uh, to replace some of the physical parts that we're missing. Coach, you guys were 11 and 11, uh, kind of, you know, where we left off now and where the season's been canceled. Uh, where did you just think this team was at and how was it coming together? Uh, I think we're starting to make our move. Uh, the, the Missouri game was um, kind of a testament to that. Um, if you look at our losses, a lot of them are one-run losses. Uh, we were in games um, and, and battles against, you know, highly talented teams, you know, such as Baylor, uh, who's doing a great job right now. If you look at our wins, we have three SEC wins. Uh, we were really starting to come along. You know, it's, it's one thing, we were definitely on a reload uh, sort of mission. You know, we had nine seniors last year, two of which were fifth-year seniors in uh, Annie Fleming and Carly Thomas. Um, so that's a lot to lose and replace. Uh, we brought two players in at the break, so they had kind of, you know, not been with us very long. So not only were we young, uh, new, we were, we had new players, you know, just stepping in. So, you know, it's, we were starting to make a move. I was really pleased with the mindset and mentality in the process. We definitely had a, a group that really wanted to win. But, you know, you can't replicate experience. I was talking about that with a very wise man, Dan Hartlip, um, not too long ago. And, you know, totally, you know that totally resonated with me. Uh, and I know that to be true. So um, as we were rocking along playing games, we were getting better and better, stronger and stronger. Hey, Tyra, it's Scott Beatty, WDWS. Uh, do you remember the last time you were not playing or coaching or around softball this time of year? Just how has this been for you personally? Oh, that would have been probably middle school, maybe. And then even then I was probably playing. So um, I did play middle school softball. I, I don't – it's very surreal. Um People are constantly kind of asking, how are you? You know, I'm getting, you know, text messages and phone calls. I'm on the phone quite a bit with, you know, some of my coaching friends from, you know, various schools and various conferences, just trying to stay up to date as far as, you know, what we think is best for the sport, uh, what we think, you know, may happen. Um, you know, a lot of this is fluid conversation because, we just don't know enough about the virus right now and the effects of the virus and how long it's going to last. But, um, you know, I absolutely think, you know, our administration and our um, university is making the right steps and doing the right things to keep us safe. Um, but, you know, the softball effect is, and the loss of it, it does feel like a loss. Um, yes, you know, it's good to have a break, but, you know, I'd rather play and get the break in the summer. Coach, you talked about the, the youth of this roster you have right now. How challenging is it to be a, a young player like this? You just kind of get your rhythm. You, you figure out, you know, kind of what the grind is, and then all of a sudden it's all gone and you're on your own. You know, this is unprecedented, so I guess we'll see. Um, I guess I could liken it, you know, to, um, you know, maybe a kid that, you know, is playing and then gets hurt and gets, you know, red shirts or something, something like that and have to come back, and people do that all the time. So I really, again, feel like it's going to depend on our mindset because every team is dealing with this particular issue, every spring sport, you know, especially. And, um, you know, if, if I'm being 100% honest, my heart hurts for our basketball team, our men's basketball team. You know, I've been an avid follower of those guys uh, since I've, you know, come to Illinois and, just seeing the way the program has evolved and, you know, you get to that point, you don't have a chance to compete for a championship. You know, that's extremely troubling. So, you know, I think everybody has, you know, something to deal with. And, um, you know, as athletes and coaches and people, you know, it's how we choose to respond to it. So as we gather more information, um, I think it's going to be 
important to, you know, make sure that we respond, um, you know, with a, in a proper way. Um, I also think this could produce a generation of athletes that really, you know, have that sense of loss, and then when they get back to it, they'll have a sense of gratefulness, you know, for maybe something that you know, they were possibly taking for granted. You know, that's kind of the thought that we're having. You know, our, my assistant coach, Trout, kind of brought, uh, Laura Trout brought that out to us as we were meeting yesterday, and I think she's exactly right. This will be a chance for, you know, our athletes to really show some appreciation and have the right mindset. Uh, and I think that can help with the with the talent wise, maximize their talent. Well, Tyler, I guess you know, we we talked about your young team quite a bit, but you do have those two seniors um, who you know this time might not be done yet at Illinois. But just what a you know both of those brought to the program since you know they've arrived and um, maybe just the end this year in particular. Um, Maddie Adams and Akila Muzan are very, very special people. Um, we talked to about Akila from the sense of she is the only person on my team that has been a part of the program for four years. Which again, after having seen you know nine seniors last year, is really interesting to have that particular you know designation for Akila that there's only one. So we kind of uh, call her our resident historian. So if we're ever trying to talk about something that happened in the past, she's basically the only one that remembers it or can reference it uh, or was a part of it. So, you know, she's um, she was on our leadership council. She was in charge of our thoughts and uh, procedures and policies for academics. And um, she's very innovative and did a, did a great job. Um, she played her role well with dignity in class and, you know, definitely um, – with someone that our players looked up to. Um, Maddie Adams joined us. Uh, she's a junior college transfer and came in and she brings a lot of energy. And she's uh, one of the funniest people I've ever met. I, I don't think she even realizes how much I actually heard or overheard of her uh, trying to bring energy and, uh, you know, just trying to bring bring the fun and the funny, you know, to our, to our grind. Um, so, you know, that's super important. We played 56 games over three months. Uh, it gets really, really hectic and really tough and tedious and having someone that can kind of uh, keep everybody focused but lighten the mood at the same time is, is important, and she was she led in that way. Uh, she was also part of our leadership council, and um, a lot of our players looked up to her as well. 